My name is Bruce Wiggin. I work at NC State University and UNC in the Joint Department of Biomedical Engineering under the direction of Greg Sawicki and our collaborator Steve Collins at Carnegie Mellon. So our uh, goal was to develop a portable passive elastic exoskeleton. We aim to uh, reduce metabolic cost and also reduce musculoskeletal loading on the body. We wanted this device to be available for both healthy and clinical populations, specifically stroke. Uh, this is important because stroke subjects expend 50% more energy as compared to their healthy controls. We know from uh, inverse dynamics that if we look at the ankle ang or the uh, ankle power during push-off, the ankle is responsible for providing the majority <coughs> of mechanical work. And uh, the hip and the knee, um, they have limited contribution during push-off. So we really focused our design around the ankle. Furthermore, uh, the study in our lab by uh, Dr. Ferris, who just presented, uh, we can see that the ankle is still responsible for producing the, uh, a large percentage of the work through different speeds. Uh, in this graph, I'm showing between 0.75 meters per second all the way up to 2 meters per second. Uh, furthermore, we looked at uh, ultrasound data, and we can tell that the elastic tissues, which are the uh, tendon, the aponeurosis, are uh, responsible for storing and returning a majority of the uh, energy during walking. So the muscle, is what we're saying, is only responsible for providing a fraction of this work. If we look at varying speeds from 0.75 to 1.75, we can see that the uh, series elastic element, which is this uh, elastic ten, uh, tissues, they're responsible for producing the majority of the work. So our design challenge was, if we uh, say that the muscles, and specifically the triceps serrate, uh, act nearly isometrically, and that our tendinous tissues act more like a spring, we can develop an exoskeleton system around this uh, by using a clutch and a spring mechanism. So from this, we uh, developed a completely passive clutch. This device works based off of um, feedback from the ankle angle. It's got a series of timing pins, a uh, ratchet and pawl mechanism, and this is fully adjustable based off the uh, individual's gait. And we uh, can set this to basically engage and disengage at key moments during the gait. So uh, if we start with heel strike, our um, device engages. This engages the ratchet to the pawl and allows the uh, system to take up all slack as we approach foot flat. At foot flat, we limit our uh, motion in our spring, so as our center of mass rotates over, we store all that energy in that rear spring. And then during push-off, all the energy that's stored in the spring is returned at the ankle. At this point, our uh, system disengages, which allows free rotation during the swing phase of walking, which we feel is very important for uh, reductions in metabolic cost. So this brings up the question, uh, will uh, people adapt to this exoskeleton? We know that uh, with pneumatic exoskeletons, subjects have uh, responded and adapted over a period of three days. So we set up our first experiment uh, in our gate lab using uh, motion capture. We uh, did metabolics, we did ultrasound, uh, EMG of the medial gastro, lateral gastro, soleus, and tibialis anterior. We also uh, put force transducers in our exoskeleton and we uh, conducted these experiments on an instrumented uh, split belt treadmill. Uh, our subjects uh, trained for three days. During these days, they uh, walked for 30 minutes with the uh, exoskeleton engaged. We based our initial spring off the subject's uh, mass and body weight and their leg length. We tested them uh, to see which springs stored the most energy, and then we trained them with the spring. Uh, following this, we did a longer, uh, more involved study using different spring stiffnesses. So our initial results from our adaptation study show that, yes, we do adapt to an exoskeleton over a period of three days, specifically on our fourth day, 
we can see uh, the majority of drop in our uh, metabolic cost. And I should say that this is a change from the, from the added mass. So we know that training plays a key role in adaptation, and we can uh, reduce below 10% added mass, but we're gonna build on these results with the subjects. So this also brings our another question, is there an optimal spring stiffness? We know from literature, specifically uh, Bregman, that there's a uh, sort of a sweet spot where we can reduce energy stiffness. Uh, in this study, they used a spring-loaded ankle foot orthosis, and this is a simulation study, uh, showing that a spring that stores slightly more energy than the um, stiffest spring reduced the energetics the most. So we tested this theory uh, using five different springs. They range from 35 to 75% ankle stiffness. Uh, we also tested subjects with uh, no exoskeleton and no spring. And our moment data shows that we are finding a uh, sweet spot, if you will, for uh, exoskeleton contribution. Our exoskeleton torque is in black. You can see around 60% uh, ankle stiffness. We're able to contribute 40% of this moment. Furthermore, if we look at uh, mechanical power output, we are able to provide 32% of the ankle power at the same spring. Oh, I should say, and however, at 75% uh, ankle stiffness that our uh, mechanical power decreased. Um, it's important to show here that our metabolics did not necessarily follow with our uh, mechanics data, uh, and we had a uh, greater uh, reduction at the uh, lower spring stiffness. This uh, shows the importance of mechanical performance and uh, trailing limb push off on the uh, energetics. Okay. So future studies, uh, I've got a hardware demo tomorrow so I can show all this then. Uh, we have a new EMG activated clutch. We have a lightweight uh, frame. We've uh, been able to reduce our mass from our original study by over half. And we have both our kinematic and EMG activated systems. And we are also, uh, this summer, we're doing stroke patient testing as well. So I'd like to thank my advisors, Greg Swicky and Steve Collins, and the uh, Human Power Lab at NC State. Uh, this time I can take any questions. Sleeve. Uh, yes, she asked how the uh, compression of the sleeve affected the uh, gastrocnemius, and no, I have uh, I've not measured that. In the, I should say, in our future designs, we're actually more focused on putting, uh, not really compressing the gastrocnemius at all, because the only the majority of the force will actually be on the front of the leg because the loading. Uh, what will be here, and then there's no need to load anything on the back of the uh, gastro, so there shouldn't be any extended pressure there. Yes. You, you mentioned that you, know, you have uh, motion capture. Yes. Do you, uh, see any sort of normal metabolic data? Yes, so one thing I, I didn't get time to say was that, yes, we did see increases in step length and step width, which could play a key role in why our metabolics didn't follow in line with the uh, mechanics data. So in our future studies, we're gonna look at limiting uh, step length, probably with a metronome. Did you try varying uh, speed with the same spring? Uh, so I, I have in two subjects, but I don't have uh, enough data to show on that quite yet, but that is a study we are conducting. So 
Uh, yes, so well, with increasing step length, our step length really changed uh, based off which frame we gave them. So uh, trailing limb, push off, and collision uh, costs could play into that. So that's one of the things we're looking at uh, controlling for. You mentioned tuning the device to a subject key. Does yes. that mean it is only when, you know, that, that you open the box and change the things and then it works best at one, at one behavioral state and then less well at other things, or does it auto adapt? Um, well, our, our next generation clutch will adapt uh, on the fly. Our first one was more of a proof of concept. So we are able to, we set the engagement and disengagement points based off of their ankle information, or their ankle angle during walking. So we bring them in and just get an ankle angle graph. I could see exactly where I needed to engage, disengage the clutch, have it set up before they came in. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, I think it's time for a 10 minute coffee break. Welcome to the speaker.